Hello, baseball fans. King Ikibu coming to you live from the underground bunker deep beneath Tuktoyaktuk. And this is the University of Tuktoyaktuk because we are going to do some classroom instruction on a game that I just started playing a couple months ago called Scoreboard Baseball. And it's a part of this new massive project that I am beginning. I'm going to play as much of the 1967 season with all the games that I own that have as played lineups and uh, so that's 15 different games and they're gonna play every game so for instance uh, here I was playing the Cleveland Kansas City game and I've played action PC diamond mine digital diamond fast score every day player baseball fall classic etc inside pitch national pastime 3 national pastime next generation plus out of the park so on and so on, all the games I have, playing this and and the end. Like, I think I finished uh, New York and Washington. New York won seven of the eight of uh, 15 games, and Washington won eight. And they've both scored 52 uh, runs apiece. And so Washington won the series. Overall, they won eight games out of 15, and the run differential was zero. So you go look at the standings, and... You have three different tables, series wins, losses, total wins, losses, and run differential. And at the end, by the time I'm 99 years old, uh, this, this season or this project will be over and we'll have uh, see who the best team of 1967 is, which was one of the best American League pennant races of all time. But today we're going to play scoreboard baseball. It's a considered, I think, a fast play game. Um, there is a video on the dice roll version. This one is the statistical helper and uh, it's made by Craig Scarborough and he was good enough to send me the latest version today so I thought I would make a video on it and uh, this is probably the best statistical helper of a dice roll game that I've seen. I just want to put it out there right away. And uh, you can see that the starting pitchers today are uh, Cardwell of the Mets and Bob Veal of the Pirates. This is opening day 1967. And the real game was won by the Pirates 6-3. And Veal went 8 innings and Cardwell went 8 innings. Both went 8 innings. You can find this game, like I said, on Inside Sports uh, website it's down here on scoreboard baseball they have lots of different seasons and it's a really fun game to play so we are going to play this game here cardwell for the mets and veal for the pirates so first thing we do we're going to play the mets at the top of the first inning cardwell on the mound so we look at cardwell and he is the starting pitcher we don't have to roll if you want to roll to see who's starting you can use this we don't have to roll. We're using the as played so pitchers. Cardwell was the starting pitcher, so we're going with him. He has a pull rating of 16. So once we get to a pull rating, that's one thing I like about this game. You don't have to do any managing, really. Uh, you know when to pull him. When he hits 16, number 16 in the pull rating, you automatically pull him. If it happens in the first inning, well, it starts at the, well, at the next inning, you'll start... But uh, it can happen in the second inning or it can happen in the ninth inning or extra innings. I played a game with uh, the Houston Astros where uh, Cuellar pitched 12 innings. It just happened that he just didn't give up many hits and walks and runs and he was able to go 12 innings. And he had a high pull rating. But Cardwell has a 16 for a pull rating. Now you can see here his, he has 1 to 3, which means that this role... The unearned number roll. If runs are scored and this number is 1 to 3, then the runs are unearned. Okay, that's what that means. The score number, we can see uh, the best pitchers like Seaver take runs away when the run number is, the score number is 1. So the best pitchers have numbers in brackets and the worst pitchers have numbers outside of brackets. And uh, we'll show you what this means in a little bit. But Cardwell's neutral. He is, he's an average pitcher. So he has nothing in his score number. The run adjustment number. He can give up more runs than normal. We'll see what this means later, a little bit later. This is the hits number. He gives up hits from 1 to 4. 
and he strikes out batters from 1 to 10, and he walks batters from 1 to 6. And this over here is when we need a reliever. So we can see the hitters on top. Everything's on one sheet in this game. So we're going to look at Cardwell. He is, uh, we need, for now, we just need to, he's a score number of zero. And for Bob Veal, he also is a score number of zero. So we have two average pitchers on the mound today. So first thing we're going to do, all the rolling is done here. All the dice, we don't need to roll any dice. It's all done for us. And all the dice are rolled with one click of the button. So the pirates are up. We're going to see, roll first roll is to see who. Who is the guy, who's the batter of the inning, of the first inning? So we're going to roll and get to this now. So 41 is the roll. So we look under who, and you see that Maury Wills is the man of the first inning. So we don't have to worry about anybody else on the team. Maury Wills is the key batter of the first inning. And his score number is 7. Then the score number is 7. So we see here that Maury Wills had a score number of 6. So 6 is less than 7. And therefore, the Pirates do not score in the first inning. If Roberto Clemente would have been the man of the inning, he has a score number of 10. So the score, he would have, we would have a Pirates runs if it was Clemente. But it's not Clemente. It's Wills who has a number of 6. Now that's where these pitchers come in. We see Steve Blass is a 20. So normally 20, since 20 is higher than 6, then... Normally, the Pirates would not score, but if it's a 20, a pitcher like Steve Blass, it would become a score, scoring inning because his number is 20. He gives up more runs than normal. Woody Fryman was really bad. He was 19 and 20. Billy O'Dell was even worse, 18 to 20. And just John Gelnar was 15 to 20. So he gave up a whole bunch of runs that, that uh, inning. And if you look at the Pirates of 1967 and look at Gelnar he probably has a very high ERA of eight so that's it just pays off so Veal is average probably the season average around 2.5 to 4 so that's why he was neutral there's some reasons for these numbers anyway so uh, we look at Will's we already determined that the score number is higher than his score number, so there's no run scored. So now we look at this. Where? 179. What does... Just because the Pirates do not score doesn't mean that Maury Wills cannot get a hit this inning. So 179, you look under here, 179 is overshot everything. So Maury Wills does not get a hit at all. So one thing I learned about this helper is normally I the first time I played it I'd bring up Maury Wills and I put zero for hits kind of keep keeping track of who was the batter of the inning don't do that uh, maybe in this new version is fixed I don't know but I found out if you put the zero if you got to put a guy here and you have zero hits it crashes the helper so I don't bother now if he Maury Wills does not get a hit there's no point of putting him in the listing for the Pirates we just leave it blank but we do Mark down Caldwell, Cardwell, he gave up, well, we have to determine if he gave up hits or not. So we know that Maury Wills didn't give up a hit or didn't get a hit. So now we see if the rest of the Pirates got a hit. And you look at the hit number, which is seven, and you look at Cardwell, and his hit number is one to four. So he does not give up a hit, not to Maury Wills or anyone else. He got no hits in the inning. And we already determined he gave up no runs. So we put a zero here. And of course, if he had gave up no runs, none of them are earned runs. And did he walk anybody? Well, the walk number is also seven. It's always the same as the hit number. And you look at uh, Cardwell, seven is higher than his walk number. So he doesn't give up any walks either. And does he strike anybody out? The strikeout number is 19. Cardwell, his... Strikeouts go up to 10, so he doesn't strike out anybody either. So he has a 1-2-3 inning, but he doesn't strike out anybody, doesn't walk anybody, doesn't give up any hits, and didn't give up any runs. So his pull number, when remember it gets up to 16, we have to pull him because he just gets one for pitching an inning. You get one for pitching an inning, you give up one for every hit that you give up, you give up 
for every run that you give up and every walk that you give up adds to your pull rating because so the best thing you want to do for a pitcher is to have a one two three inning with no walks no hits no runs and then the pull number only goes up by one so cardwell has a very good inning you see that the the statistical helper here automatically gives zero for the pirates and we go to the bottom of the inning for the mets the mets are now on the on the clock if you want to say it so bob veals on the mound and so we roll for the mets who is the batter? 91. 91 is Cleon Jones. Cleon Jones has a score number of 4. The score number here is 13. 13 is higher than 4, so the Mets do not score in the inning. So we can go here to Bob Veal. We know for a fact Bob Veal does not give up any runs in the first inning, and already the New York is auto-populated with a 0. So do, do, does Veal give up any hits? Well, the man of the inning was Cleon Jones. We look at this number, 111. We look at Cleon Jones, 111. Now it's under the home run number, but it's a question mark. So of course, logic says, and we're still a society of logic, I hear, I hope. Logic says if no runs are scored in the inning, therefore Cleon Jones did not get a home run. So this number of home run, if this would have been a four for the score number, which is within Cleon Jones's score number, and you get 111, Cleon Jones's hit would be a home run in the inning. And then we look up here and run score to see how many runs were scored. But because it's question mark, no runs were scored, therefore Cleon Jones could not get a home run, so he does not give a hit, get get a hit as well. So we don't audio put Cleon Jones here, he does not get a hit. Does Bob Veal give up a hit to somebody else? Bob Veal's hit number is 4. Hits 13 is higher than 4. No hits. Walks 13. His walk number is a 10. It's higher. 13 is higher than 10. He does not give up any walks. 3 is the strikeout number. 3 is lower than 11, so Bob Veal does get a strikeout. How many strikeouts? If it's 12, oh, well, here's 12. So if it's 12, he would have struck out three. If it was 8 to 11, he would have struck out two. But the number is three, so he strikes out one guy. One strikeout. He doesn't walk anybody because his walk number is higher than 10. So we put zero for walks, and his hit number is four. 13 is higher than 4. He doesn't give up any hits. So he also has a 1-2-3 inning where one of the three outs was a strikeout. So his pull number is 1. His pull number when we have to pull Bob Veal is 18. So we go to the top of the second. The Pirates are up. We roll for the Pirates. 36. It's once again Maury Wills. The score number is 17. 17 is higher than 6. So therefore, there's no runs scored in the second inning for the Pirates. We can put a zero by Cardwell. He did not give up any runs. Now, you look at these, remember, if it was, uh, we'll look at some of these Mets. If it was Chuck Estrada on the mound and the score number is 17, his score number is 13-20. So there would be runs for Chuck Estrada. Thankfully, Chuck Estrada is not on the mound. It is Cardwell who has nothing here. So, therefore, Cardwell does not contribute to the score number. So, it's still no score for the Pirates. So, we look at Maury Wills. Does he give, get hit this inning? It's 109. 109 is overshot everything. He does, once again, Maury Wills does not get a hit. 17 is, we look now at Cardwell. His hit number is 4. Hits are 17. 17 is higher than 4. He does not give up any hits in the second inning. Once again, he has a no-hitter going. Does he give up any walks? 17. 17 is higher than 6. He does not walk anybody. He has a perfect game going. Does he strike out anybody? 14. Cardwell's strikeout numbers go up to 10. The number is 14. Does not strike anybody out. And therefore, no runs, no hits, no strikeouts for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the second inning. We go to the bottom of the second. The Mets are up. Here's their roll. 138. 138 is Eddie Charles. Now look at here. The score number is 1. So 
One is within his score number, so the Mets will score this inning. Now, that's where these great pitchers like Tom Seaver for the Mets and uh, Al McBean for the Pirates. If Al McBean was on the mound for the Pirates, he would nullify this score number because he has a one in brackets. But it's Bob Veal who's blank, so he does not nullify the one. So the Mets indeed will score this inning. So we know the bat the batter is Eddie Charles. 139 is the number. Eddie Charles, we go 139. His home run number goes up to 108. So he overshoots the home run number. So what kind of hit does he get then? If he overshoots and has a run, he scores. We already determined he has scored. The Mets have scored. That means Eddie Charles gets a single. So Eddie Charles... Gets a single, and that's it. Now we we want to see how many runs does Eddie do, do the Mets get in this inning? That's where this number here comes. Runs seven. It's a single, and it's a seven. So we look here under this column for the Mets. We look under the single, and the number is seven. So the number of runs is one. Right now, the Mets have scored one run, but we have to look at Bob Veal. Bob Veal has a run adjustment number of plus one. So we go back here and seven plus one is eight. Eight is still within the one runs. If it was 13, if the run number was 13, Bob Veal with his plus one would push it up to two. That's what that means. Remember that Cardwell is a plus three. So he would push an 11 in this case to the next to two runs. But Veal is a plus one, so he takes that seven, plus one is eight. It's still within the one run row. So the Mets have scored one run. Veal has given up one run in the inning. Charles has driven in that run because he's the man of the inning. And it was not a double, it was not a triple, it was not a home run, it was not a stolen base. It was just a single and an RBI. So does Veal give up more than just the one hit? He gave up the one hit to Charles. We have to look at now, we have to look at Bob Veal and the score, the hit number is one. So we see here, because it's one run, he automatically gives up one hit. It's to Charles. And then this, also another run is one, but here he gives up one is two hits. So Bob Veal gives up three hits in the inning and one run, it is earned. We don't have to put earn. It automatically puts earned run. So we don't have to enter it in here. If it makes you feel better, we'll put earned runs one. Walks is one. So we look at the walk column. Walk is one to eight. Two is nine to ten. It is one. So he gives up a walk as well. Not a very good inning. Oh, we, we this was, I went in the wrong column. So this was zero, zero, zero. Zero and zero, wasn't it? Or do you have one strikeout? Yeah, yeah, one strikeout. You have to do it in the second one. There we go. Three, one, one, one. And does he strike out anybody out? Five. Bob Veal, five. And strikeout is a strikeout. He's had a strikeout in the inning. So now you notice the score is one nothing Mets. They have three hits. One was Charles. Two were other guys on the Mets. And this will come later. We have to determine who those other hits are. It says hits needed two. So well, that comes at the end of the game. So now you notice that Veal gives up a run. He gave up three hits and a walk. So now his pull number is seven. Remember that his pull number is 18. So he had a bad inning there. And that contributed six to his pull rating, which is now 18. He's still in the game because this pull rating is not 18. But... It went up significantly in the second inning, and the Mets lead one to nothing. So now we go to the third inning, and it's for the Pirates. Their roll is 194. So you look at 194, and it's way down here. Pittsburgh pitchers. The pitchers are the key batter. So that is Bob Veal. Bob Veal is the is the key batter of the inning. 74. 74 is higher than 30, so the pitchers do not get a hit. 
Nine is higher than the score number of the Pittsburgh pitchers. So once again, no hit, no runs for the Pirates. They give up no runs. The pitchers don't give a hit, up a hit. Does anybody else get a hit? We go to Cardwell. Cardwell's hit number is four. So nine is higher than four. So nobody gets a hit for the Pirates. Their walk number is nine. His walk number is six, so he doesn't walk anybody. And his strikeout number is two. Cardwell strikes out a guy because it's one to eight for one strikeout. So he strikes out one guy and his pull number, he has three perfect innings, so his pull number is three. Cardwell's pitching very well through three innings and Pittsburgh has nothing so far. So we go to the bottom of the third. The Mets roll is 136. 136, once again, is Eddie Charles. His score number is nine. Nine is higher than four. No runs are scored in this inning. We can already put this down for Veal. Does not give up any runs. 197 is, is Eddie Charles's hit number. And that overshoots 108. So he does not give up a hit or does not get a hit. And we, now we go to Bob Veal. Bob Veal's hit number is four. The hit number is nine. So Bob Veal does not give up any hits in the inning. He does not give up any runs. The walk number is nine. Bob Veal has a, gives up a lot of walks. So he walked two guys in the inning because it's nine is under the column nine to 10 is two walks. So he walked two guys and six, Bob Veal, has a strikeout. So he has three strikeouts and three walks so far through three innings. And the Mets does not give up a run that inning, so it's still one nothing Mets. We go to the top of the fourth. Here's the roll for the fourth inning. 127. 127 is Don Clendenin. Hope you follow that because it's 127. If it's 10 to 30, it'd be Mazeroski, so on, so on. 127 is Don Clendenin. And he's unlucky. Because his score number is five, and the roll is, or score number is four, and in the, and the score number is five. So the Pirates again do not score in the inning, because because Don Clendenin's score number is four, and the roll was five. Does he get a hit? One fifteen, Clendenin. It would be a home run, but again, because he did not score, it takes a home run away, and Clendenin does not give up or get a hit. So now we look and see if. Cardwell gives up a hit. One to four is his hit number. The hit number is five. He does not give up a hit. He's still pitching a no-hitter. Five walks. So no longer does he give up a, have a perfect game because the walk number is five and Cardwell, one to five is a walk. So he walk. He allowed his first base runner a walk. Nine is strikeout number. And he struck out two guys in the inning because the strikeout... Nine is two strikeouts, so he has three strikeouts, one walk, no hits, no runs. His pull number went up two, one for the inning and one for the walk, so his pull number is five. Veals is ten already. And the Pirates still are scoreless. Go to the bottom of the inning. The Mets are up. The roll is 178. 178 is Amos Otis. Amos Otis... You look at this score number, your heart jumps because that's very good. However, Amos Otis's score number is only two. So the Mets do not score in the inning. We already put down for Veal. He dodges a bullet there. Normally when you roll a three, you're going to give up some runs. But because Amos Otis score number, he had a bad year, only was two. So let's see if Amos Otis gets a hit though. 72 is the hit number. And it's higher than 63, so Amos Otis doesn't even give up or get a hit. So Amos Otis doesn't get, get a hit. Let's see if any other Mets got a hit. We look at Bob Veal. His hit number goes up to four. Hit number is three. So Veal does, up, does give up another hit. He doesn't give up a run, however. Does he give up a walk? Walk number is three. Bob Veal... Walk is one to eight is a walk, so he does walk another guy. Gets in a jam, but pitches out of it without giving up any runs. Does he strike out anybody? Eight. Veal's number eight is two strikeouts, so he struck out five in the game. He's given up four walks, five strikeouts. 
and four hits and no and one run. His pull number is now 13. He's five away from being pulled. And after four innings, it's one nothing New York. We go to Pittsburgh's top of the fifth. Here's the roll, 107. It's Willie Stargell, who has a high score number of, of seven. Unfortunately for the Pirates, their score number roll is 12. They do not score. And Cardwell still is pitching a shutout. Does Willie Stargell have a hit? 149. 149 is the, in the home run, question mark. But because no runs were scored, he does not have a home run. Willie Stargell does not have a hit. The hit number is 12. We already know what's happening here because the one goes up to 1-4. to four. So one Cardwell is still pitching a no-hitter through 5. He's walked a guy, so he doesn't have... Does not have a perfect game. 12 is the walk number. Cardwell, 6. He does not walk anybody in that inning. Strikeouts, 15. Cardwell's strikeouts go up to 10. So no strikeouts. He's not striking a lot of guys out, but he has not given up a hit through 5 innings, through 4.5. one nothing Mets. Bottom of the 5th. Who is the man of the inning? 44. 44 is Bud Harrelson. His score number is 4. The score number is 10. Veal does not give up any runs in the inning. Does Bud Harrelson have a hit? 157. He does not. So no hits for Harrelson. Is there hits for anybody else? Go to Veal. Veal's number is 4. The hit number is 10. No hits for Veal in that inning. The walks is 10. Veal, you look here, 2 walks. He walks a lot of people. He gives up two walks in the inning because 10 is two walks. Strikeout 16. No, it's over the 16 is over 12, so no strikeouts. And now his pull number is 16 because he walked, he's walked six guys already. That's the walks are adding up his pitch count and he's close to being pulled, although he's only given up one run. So with five innings, it's one nothing Mets. And Cardwell's in control. He's pitching a no-hitter. And Veal's on the verge of being pulled. Now he's 16. It's once he gets to 18. So he can get he can pitch one more inning. If he gives up no hits and no walks, he can pitch into the seventh. If he gives up a hit or walk, he's going to have to be pulled for the seventh inning. That's how that works. So go to the Pirates sixth. Here's their roll. 103. Matty Alou. 50, he's very good. He's 7, but the score number is 15, so the Pirates don't score again. Shutout is intact. How about the no-hitter? 144. Matty Alou is overshot. He does not get a hit. 15, we already know this. Cardwell is only go up to 4. He's still pitching a no-hitter in the 6th inning. How about the walks? 15. Cardwell's walks go up to 6. He has not walked a guy in this inning. Strikeouts, 19. Cardwell's go up to 10. No strikeouts. He's not striking. He's, bearing, he's getting the ball in play. He's letting his fielders do the work for him. He has a no-hitter through six innings and a shutout, although he's walked a guy, and he struck out three. Through five and a half, Pirates don't have a hit. The Mets lead one nothing. We go to the bottom of the six. This will determine if, if Bob Veal gets another inning or not. He has one inning guaranteed, but does he have another inning? The most he can pitch is seven. Here's the roll. 39. 39 for the Mets is once again Buddy Harrelson. The score number is 19, so they don't score. Veal is getting out of jams, not giving up many runs, only one. Does he give up a hit to Bob to Buddy Harrelson? Look at this, 47. 47 is under the double. So we add Buddy Harrelson here. Buddy Harrelson has a hit, not 41 hits, one hit. He does not have a run because the score number is 19, but he has a double. So Veal gives up another hit. So this is the last inning for Veal because the hit, you can see here now the pull number is 18. We automatically take him out next inning. He's reached his pull number, even though he's only given up one run. How about walks? 19 is higher than his uh, 10, so he did not walk anybody. And strikeouts, 
18. That's above 12, so he does not strike anybody out. So Bob Veal's line, six innings, five hits, six walks, and five strikeouts. And that's it for Bob Veal. Now, the way I play it, I don't know if it's in the rules, but if you have to pull Bob Veal, if we roll the Pittsburgh pitchers, then the Pirates get a re-roll, okay? Because you would take him out for a pinch hitter. That's the way, it doesn't make sense that you would, if you roll the Pittsburgh pitchers, that they would be the, the, the key batters of the inning because you'd pull them for a pinch hitter because you're pulling Veal. That's the way I play it. Let's see if that, I doubt if that'll come into effect, but it might. So we're gonna roll for the Pirates, 72. 72 is Gene Alley. The score number is 16, so the shutout is intact for Cardwell. 152. Uh, Gene Alley. Yep, the, he doesn't give up. He doesn't get a hit. And we know that the hit number 16, Cardwell's only goes up to four. So the no hitter is still intact for Don Cardwell. And I think Don Cardwell had a new no hitter in real life. I am pretty sure. Wasn't it with the Cubs? Let's see if I'm right. My, you know, I wasn't alive then. But somehow my memory... He was traded to the Cubs. And in his second game... No, his first game with the Cubs, he pitched no-hitter. First no-hitter ever thrown by a pitcher in his first start with a new team. So my memory is correct. They say to listen to lots of music, it, it staves off Alzheimer's. So I recommend that. Listen to lots of music. I have listened to lots of music. I love music. Although I'm still... A ways, hopefully, from Alzheimer's. But that proved there. It hasn't set in yet because I remembered, yes, Don called Cardwell did pitch a no-hitter in real life, and he's got one going here for the Mets in 1967. So uh, we're through seven. 16 is higher than his four. So he does not give up a hit in the seventh. The walk number is 16. He does not walk anybody. And the strikeout number is three. So he does strike out a guy. He strikes out number four for Cardwell. His pull number is only eight. Remember, it's 16. So he is pitching a masterful game. Six and a half innings here on opening day. It's still one nothing Mets. Bob Veal is now out of the game. He's reached his pull number of 18. 18 here. 18 here. So what do we do? We're going to roll this purple number is going to determine so you look at the situation if it's a save situation you look at this calm if it's extra innings you look at this calm if you're ahead or tied in the eighth inning or ninth inning you look at this calm but the pirates are behind in the seventh inning so we look at this column right here behind in the sixth or seventh and we're going to determine you don't even have to pick which reliever should i bring in the game determines that by this roll 64 you look under 64 in this column, all the way down here, and it's Roy Face. Roy Face will come into the game for the Pirates in the seventh inning. So you click here, and you bring in Face. Face comes in. Face is a, he's a good pitcher. We knew that. He's a famous guy. He's, he was a closer for the Pirates for many years. He is a one in brackets. That means if we roll a score of one, he takes it away because that's how good he is. His pull number, however, is only four. He has a run adjustment of minus two. So he's an excellent pitcher. And it's going to be tough for the Mets to score. They bring him in to hold the runner. Hold. They want to stay only a run behind. So here is the Mets. Here's their roll in the seventh. 107 is the number. 107 is Jerry Buchek. And the score number is four. They roll a 13. So they do not score. We can already put zero for Roy Face. 39 in boot check. 39 is a double. So we right click and pick boot check. Boot check gets a hit. He does not, they do not score, but he gives up a hit and it's a double. So Face gives up at least one hit. Let's see if he gives up any more. The hit number is 13. Let's go to the Pirates face, one to four. So it's higher, he does not give up any more hits. He gives up one hit 
to boot check, not 10, one. And does he walk anybody? His walk number is 13, face up to five. So he does not walk anybody. Zero, does he strike anybody out? 10, his strikeouts go up to nine. So he does not strike out anybody out. So face gets to pitch another inning because his pull number is four and he's only at a two. So the Pirates get the advantage of having face for another inning. Go to the top of the eighth. The Pirates looking for their first hit. Cardwell in control. Here's the roll. 178. 178 is Manny Sanguian. The score number is 15. That's higher than four. They do not score another run. The shutout is intact. Is the no-hitter in intact? 114. Manny Sanguian. Higher than 83. So that he does not give up a hit to Sanguian. We already know that Cardwell, his hits go up to four. So the no-hitter is still going on. No hits. Does he give up a walk? 15. We already know. No, it goes up to six. So he does not walk a guy. His pull number is only nine. Does he strike out anybody? Five. Cardwell strikes out a guy. Strikeout number five for Cardwell. His pull number is nine. He gets to go another inning. As he has a no hitter going a score through seven and a half. One nothing Mets. So now it's the Mets' turn. Roy Face is on the mound. Here's the roll. 122. 122 is Jerry Grody. He only has a score number of two. The score number is one. You think, oh, the Mets score. And it's 18. They would, let's see, let's pretend. So let's pretend uh, 197 on, uh, who is it again? 122. 122 is Jerry Grody. The hit would be a single. 18 is a very high number, which means we would roll again. And so we go by the second number, 20. So the, the Mets would score five runs in this inning. That's what this means. You look at the first number, 18. It's a single. 18 on a single is RA, which means roll again. You go the second number, 20. It's the roll again, 20 is five. Jerry Grody would have us... Two runs single, and you have three RBIs hit by somebody else. Now, you look at the unearned run number would be three. So all the runs, no, it's one to two. So all the runs would be earned for Roy Face. However, remember what I said, the one in brackets, Roy Face just took away five runs. He stole five runs away from the Mets by his incredible pitching prowess. And so instead of five runs for the Mets, they get zero. We got to put it over here, though. Roy Face, the amazing face, and uh, does takes the hits away from, from Jerry Grody. Instead of five runs, he gives up none because of the one in brackets. That's the power of the one in brackets. And if you have a one to two like Bruce Del Canton, you've got something special. Very special there in Bruce Del Canton. However, he doesn't pitch that often. He only pitches in extra innings. And if you're behind in the sixth or seventh or five or less, so he's not a late inning guy. But if you're privileged enough to get Bruce Del Canton in the game, he's not going to give up many runs. But Roy Face took away five runs. So, we, so let's see if he gives up any hits. Okay, so we look at Roy Face. The hit number is one. Roy Face gives up two hits in the inning. So that is official. We have to pull him for the ninth if the Mets do bat in the ninth. How about walks? One walk number. So we look at the walks. Roy Face gives up a walk. He had a lot of trouble, but he pitched out of it. Nine is the strikeout number. Roy Face struck out two guys. So that's how he did it. He struck out two guys to get out of a massive jam. And his pull number has, is over four, so he's going to have to be pulled. But he does his job. He gives up a bunch of hits and, and walks, but he does not allow any more runs. He keeps the Pirates in the ball game. But let's see what's going to happen in the top of the ninth inning. Cardwell on the mound going for a no-hitter. He's not going for a perfect game because he walked a guy. Here is the all-important roll. 155. 
155 is Jerry May. He has a decent score number of five, but the score number is 16. So the Mets are going to win the game on a shutout. Game is complete. This message will only be shown once. We click OK. There's a lot to be determined, however. But no hitters to be determined. Jerry May, his hit number is 98. 98 is above 80. So it's in the home run question mark because he does not, the Pirates don't score runs. He does not hit a home run. So Jerry May does not give up a hit. 16 is higher than four. So not only does he pitch a shutout, on opening day, Don Cardwell pitches a no-hitter at Shea Stadium, opening day 1967. Walks, 16. 16 is higher than six. He does not walk anybody. And strikeouts, 20. Now here's another factor I haven't talked about. And that's this. The hit number of strikeout number 20. The Pirates adjust here. If this is a hit number, and maybe it happened, I forgot to check. Were any of these hit numbers 19 or 20? That is the question. I don't know. And that's one factor here. Because the Pirates have a lot of hits. They're a team that gets a lot of hits. 19 or 20 become hit numbers. And we'll have to scroll back the video to see if they ever rolled a 19 or 20 hits. Because that would take away the no hitter. But we don't know. I can't, I can't remember any 19 or 20 hits. We'll have to go back. I'll have to go back and watch this video. But the strikeouts is blank. So 20, they don't get a strikeout. Because this adjusts it team-wide. Opposition team. If there's a walk number of one, the Pirates get, take away the walk. And they get hits on 19 or 20. Strikeouts are neutral. So no strikeout for Cardwell. And what I'll do... I mean, we got to play it as is. It's a no-hitter. We kick the box score. No-hitter on opening day. Close it. Okay, now we have to determine these five hits. The Mets of or the Pirates have no hits, so there's nobody to determine. But we have five hits to determine for the Mets. So we do no runs. The runs are all the one run is accounted for. It was Eddie Charles. He got the RBI. We don't have to worry about RBIs, but five hits have to be determined. So what we do is we roll who five times to see who got these hits. First one is 153. 153 is Eddie Charles. So Charles gets his second hit of the game. Good day for Eddie Charles. Second roll, 97. 97 is Ron Swoboda. We go here, click Swoboda, and he gets one of the hits. So we have three more to determine. Roll again, 191. 191 is Al Luplo. Al Luplo gets a hit on opening day at Shea Stadium. Two more to determine. Here's the roll. 157. 157 is Bob Johnson. Bob Johnson gets a hit. Oop, not Hiller. Bob Johnson. There we go. One hit for Bob Johnson. And one more. 151. 151 is Eddie Charles. He has three hits on opening day. Okay, now we save statistics. And now we can look at the box score. Here's the box score. The Pirates have no hits. And I'm going to look back at the video and determine if we rolled 19 or 20 any time for the hit number. Uh, the New York wins, however. They will win the game regardless, but that will just determine whether we had a no-hitter or not. The actual time was 30 minutes. I have gotten it down, if I don't have to explain things, to 15. Hopefully I'll get it down even more as time goes on and get more familiar with this game. 
The Mets have eight hits in the game, one run, scored by, driven in by Eddie Charles in the second inning, and on opening day, one to nothing, Mets. Tentatively a no-hitter, but I have to look back at the video. Hope that was a little bit instructive. I definitely recommend this game. It's a lot of fun, and it keeps amazing statistics. Let me show you that. Go here. Not clear team. Oh, I, here, statistics. And we'll look at... See, well, so far I've played... Uh, yeah, I think I might have screwed up something here by doing that. Hitting the clearest teams thing. I think I've hit next game. I think it'll come up. Okay, next game. Here we go. Now will you let me... Here we go. Okay. So we played California, Baltimore, Cleveland, and New York. Won their first games against Detroit, Minnesota, Kansas City, Washington. The Cubs, Reds, Astros, and Mets won their first game. And Braves, Dodgers, Phillies, and Pirates lost. And you look here at league statistics. It keeps track of the teams. Keeps track of all the players. Now it has a, a formula to determine... You know, the players that weren't up didn't get hits. They determined by their at-bats per game. You know, they determined that uh, Paul Blair was up three times in opening day and didn't get a hit, etc. Uh, you know, all the statistics are kept. League leaders. I mean, it's amazing this uh, statistical helper that Mr. Scarborough has come up with. And also newspaper type of uh, report. Um, season awards are here. K-Line so far is the best after one game. Sam McDowell of Cleveland is leading the Cy Young after one game. Uh, season charts, this makes not much sense until you've played a lot of games and close. But we'll look, we'll look at this because I have to save the uh, the box score. We'll bring up the box score here. Oh, I guess I didn't save the box score. But it was one nothing. So I go here now into the here, and I go to um, Mets, and you go to scoreboard SB, and they win one to nothing. And you go to Pirates, they lose in the scoreboard. Zero one, zero one. So you can see here, so far in this series, I've played five of the games and the Pirates have lost two games, or won two games and lost three. They both scored 23 runs and so far they're losing, oh, so it keeps track of who wins the series overall, total games and total runs. And at the end we see who wins every, so we go to the standings and we'll see who, you know, who are the best teams See, so far, the Atlanta's won nine and lost six games. Cincinnati, eight, seven. And run differential. And so all you have to do here is you just have to sort this and go sort. Ah. And go sort like this. No. Custom sort, yeah. Custom sort by column Y, largest to smallest, and there you go. Atlanta leads run differential. They have 11 run differential. Houston minus 11. Cincinnati 3200. So you do the same thing here for the American League. You do this here for standing. So you can just find, um, do a custom sort. You sort by the percentage S, largest to smallest, and bam. So far, Mets are leading with a 600, tied with the Mets and the Braves, have a 600 winning percentage, and Pittsburgh and Houston are on the bottom. Becomes more meaningful as you play more games. Anyway, that is today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Scoreboard baseball, I recommend it highly. This is King Ikibu signing off. Goodbye, everybody.